All right, today we'll be doing a um, iPod Nano fourth gen ultimate repair guide. So, yeah, before we get started, I just want to say this iPod is basically not fixable un unless it's anything further than a battery replacement. There's just so many issues with the buttons and the logic board failing and the flex cables infused into the PCB being corroded. And, you know, if that happens, it's just unfixable. So before you even get started, just know that if you have anything more than just a battery, you might you might actually be able to fix it. You know? Or even if it is just a battery, it's just so fragile and delicate that yeah, the chances of you actually fixing it's just not not 100%. Yeah, this is probably the most unfixable iPod, maybe the most unfixable product Apple makes, or maybe not. The keyboard might take it over this, but still, you know, let's get into it and you'll see. All right. So in order to open the iPod, we need to remove the top and bottom plastics. And um, these are just held in with like glue or adhesive. So in order to do this, I usually use just a dull box cutter knife like I did with the uh, Nano Second Gen. So um, yeah, a lot of people say not to use metal on metal, but you know, I think this is, I think this is just the most effective way to get them off. Like I've tried with the uh, plastic pry tools and everything, it just never works properly. They're not th they're not thin enough to get in there and pull it off. You end up making more of a mess with those, honestly. So just use the, um, just use like a box cutter knife or something, and just be gentle with it, because you know if you do slip, it can scratch the housing. But yeah, I know I feel like this is just the more effective way to get them off, with the least amount of damage being done. So yeah, just be gentle with it. And yeah, the plastic on these is pretty thin as well. So you don't need to go in that deep probably like not even a millimetre thick and just like copy what I do yeah just peeling it up like that yeah I have to use another iPod to demonstrate because the uh, iPod we're fixing in today's video doesn't have it doesn't have like a thing on the top yeah and the same thing on the bottom as well just be careful in the parts where it's like thin because it's easy to like accidentally snap these just due to how thin it is and yeah that'll reveal the screws now just note with these screws the ones at the sides are in at like a 45 degree angle and there's two at the top two at the bottom and they are different sizes as well so you want to have like a tray or a magnetic sheet to just keep them sorted yeah sometimes some adhesive can get stuck in the screws as well and like it can make it a pain to screw out so you can use the tweezers and scrape back that adhesive if it gets stuck in the screw hole Again, sometimes it doesn't screw out all the way as well, so you might have to use the tweezers to just pull them out at the end there. Yeah, but make sure you have it in at a 45 degree angle, because if you just go in straight, you'll end up mashing up the screw, and then, you know, won't be able to get the rest of the iPod out without destroying the housing completely, so yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you want to make sure you have like an appropriate screwdriver for opening phones and iPods and stuff. You can't just use like a big one and expect it to work. You'll just end up mashing up the screws. And yeah, so there's three at the bottom, two over that plastic shield piece, and then one over, over the um, headphone jack, and then two at the top as well. Yeah, now just to get the screen out, just use like yeah the box cut knife again or ice SMO or whatever and just put it under there just a tiny little bit and the screen comes up by sliding up like straight up so yeah just copy what I'm doing here it should come out sometimes it's a bit stiff usually like maybe the battery will be a bit expanded or there'll just be dirt in the sides there gunking it up so just be careful you can accidentally snap the um or the lock switch as well, because that's on a flex cable, but the uh, LCD as well, if you put anything in there too hard. Yeah, and that lock switch is just attached with like a really thin flex cable, and it's pretty easy to accidentally snap that. So yeah, and to remove that glass, you just simply push down and back at the bottom of it there, like what I did in the video, 
And that should come out. Mm -hmm. Now, just to remove the um, LCD connector, just remove that captain tape. Yeah, and this is the um, flex cable for the LCD I was talking about as well. That's infused into the uh, logic board. So, and quite often it can break as well because it's right in that position where water often gets in as well. So if you get like a corroded backlight pad there, you know, the whole thing's just dead. You have to throw it out basically. You can always try and run a wire, but, you know, that's like a real last resort sort of thing and it doesn't always work. And yeah, just remove that cover. This one broke because the iPod was in such terrible condition but usually it should just pull straight out. To remove the logic board and battery that's still in there, it's sort of like glued down or taped down underneath so just get your ice SMO and pry underneath there to loosen that adhesive up you could use some isopropyl alcohol as well if you wanted and yeah just as I do push from the top of the battery like that and yeah don't push it all the way out at first because you've still got the uh, buttons connected at the bottom there so just push it down like maybe half centimeter and that'll reveal the buttons. So yeah, just undo those cables. These will also be adhesive down onto the 30 pin as well, so just be careful getting those off. You can use some isopropyl alcohol always. I don't in the video, but you know, just be careful not to rip them, I guess. And yeah, that whole assembly will just slide it straight out. Yeah, just being careful of that flex cable with the lock switch. Because that can pretty easily break if you're not careful. You just yank it or whatever. And yeah, yeah you can see those two flex cables for the um, LCD and the buttons there. Infused straight into the board. I don't... Look, I'm not an electrical engineer, but I don't, don't know if that's standard practice. That seems like a more advanced like manufacturing technique as well but like yeah there's also a good time to inspect the board for any water damage or anything like that which I don't know it's pretty common with these iPods even sometimes they still work but you'll open it up and it'll just be corroded in parts so it's a good time to like give it a scrub down with the um, toothbrush and alcohol So yeah, just carefully peel that um, flex back. And peel the battery back like that. It's sort of adhesive at the bottom there. And that'll reveal the uh, connection, which will need to be soldered. So you will have to solder for this repair. And yeah, just removing that captain tape there. But yeah, just heat up those pads put some flux and remove the battery and you want these pads to be like nice and flat because um, what can happen when you're putting a new battery in sometimes you can if the balls are too big you can sort of cause a short by them flowing together and it's kind of hard to see because it's like on the underside so just make sure they're flat now it can be kind of fiddly lining it up with the new battery as well so I usually like to use tweezers to hold it in place and yeah since I would installed this battery previously I'm just taking some some of that extra solder off just to make sure it's flat there just 
So yeah. Just get them attached at first. So it like holds itself in place and then you can go back later one by one and fix up the um, joints to make them like look nice and look proper. And yeah, just only heat one at a time so the whole connection doesn't fall off. And yeah, just clean up some of that excess flux, excess flux with some isopropyl alcohol and the um, cotton bud. Yeah, and just put some captain tape over those connections as well. Just, I think it had it before anyways, you just, just make sure it doesn't short on anything. Yeah, and yeah, fold the battery over, get that um, flex cable for the lock switch lined up, as it was before. Before we put it back in the housing, I like to do a little test outside because there's heaps that can go wrong with this iPod, you just want to test before you go and put it all back. So yeah, just put the LCD in, uh, connect the buttons up, just make sure it turns on and that all the buttons still work. And yeah, just plug in that 30 pin and it'll and test if it works. I think on my first try, the housing I tried had, um, oh no, that's what happened. The, um, the LCD wasn't lighting up, even though it was before. And sometimes this can happen due to a, like a light layer of oxidization over the um, pins on the connector. So what you can do is just give them a rub down with alcohol and maybe a little scrape with the tweezers as well. And that'll like just remove that layer of oxidization and make those pins like shiny and gold again, which I do here and which actually does work as we can see in the video. So yeah, if that happens and you think you've stuffed it up, just try that. Happens pretty often with the gold pins on the flex cables with these iPods. Yeah, and that can also work for buttons not working as well with the um, button connector there. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure this first try the uh, buttons don't work on the housing. But yeah, I wanted to leave all that type of stuff in because, you know, with the Nano fourth gen, these are the sort of issues that you're going to be dealing with, you know. I didn't just want to do a perfect video where I fix it in the first go, because my experience with these Nano fourth gens is they're just, you know, you don't fix every one of them. They break often. A lot of them already are broken and in unfixable conditions as well. And they're just that fragile that you might even end up breaking them along the way. Or they may break themselves, who knows. So yeah, I'll try again with this housing. And the buttons work on this one, I'm pretty sure. There you go. Yeah, and it's much better to find out that something doesn't work now than later on once you've assembled the whole thing. Because then you're just going to have to, you just wasted all that time. So yeah, before we put it in, what you want to do is you want to get some captain tape and stick that um, LCD connector back. Because if you don't, sometimes you can, um, like it'll just bend or go in in a really weird position. And you can end up completely destroying it. And there's no replacing that as well. Once you stuff up those um, flex cables that are attached to the PCB, that's it. You have to basically just buy a new one and chuck that one out. And very carefully place that in. Being careful of the other flex cable for the lock switch as well. And just being very gentle and careful in general. Also, the flex cable for the um, buttons that's attached to the housing has to be in a very specific position. It has to be on top of the um, logic board. If it ends up at the side, you can end up ripping it. So just watch for that as well. Yeah, you can see as I've got it here how that little bump in it is like hanging over onto the top. I'll highlight it so you know what I'm talking about and just show a close up of the actual position. And sometimes this can be a very tight fit as well because there's just not that much space, especially if your battery is a little thicker as well. So just, you know, as you're putting this in, go slowly, just wiggle it in as well. Don't force it because you can rip components off the circuit board, just like with the Nano second gen. So, so yeah, don't push it in all the way as well because we still got to plug those buttons in. So yeah, just get it to just that 30 pin sticking out at the bottom. You could even use some adhesive to stick this back down because it was stuck initially, but I don't find that's necessary all the time. But yeah. And now when you push this back in, if you, you want to hold the tweezers so that it holds the um, flex cable against the 30 pin because if you just push the, uh, if you just push the logic board straight in, what will happen is that the flex cable will just, it'll still stick out the bottom of the iPod and yeah, you won't be able to push it in afterwards. So do what I do, how I've like grabbed it with tweezers and push it all in as one thing. 
and then it'll go in properly and be in the correct position. Because if it sticks out, you know, you can't put it back together and you might end up ripping it when you try and do the next stage, putting that um, cover back on. So yeah, at this point you want to get the uh, screw for the headphone jack straight in there because, you know, if you go to test it, go to plug it into the computer and then, and you haven't screwed that screw in and then you unplug it by just ripping the iPod straight out. Sometimes you can rip the logic board out as well and then all the flex cables will break and you'll just, you'll have destroyed all your work. So just make sure you put that in. Yeah, and at this point I realize I have a bent pin in the 30 pin. So I fix it with the tweezers and get it all good eventually. Not every pin in the 30 pin actually does something as well. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you can you can have a bent pin that can snap off and it just won't affect anything. And now before we put it back together, I like to do another test just to double check everything again because we could have damaged something in that whole process as well. So yeah, and at this stage it does look like it's turning on. But what happens here? Yeah, what actually happened was the button stopped working midway through that repair there. Uh, I'm pretty sure it ended up getting the logic board error. There's two causes of buttons not working with this iPod. First, it could just be the housing. It could be corrosion under the actual buttons themselves. And if that's the case, that's an easy replacement because you can just get a new housing and fix it that way just by getting new buttons. But there's another issue where it can actually be a logic board issue. And what will happen there is you'll be able to restart the iPod by holding the menu and center buttons. But that is it. None of the other button inputs will work and the scrolling won't work. So, and if that's the case, there's nothing you can do. I haven't, there might be a um, board repair you can do for that, but I haven't figured that out yet. So if that happens, you basically just have to toss it. It's basically dead. There's no fixing that. And... Yeah, that's what's happened halfway along here, which was pretty uncommon, but we got that on camera here. Usually it'll usually it'll have that before you start the repair, but, you know. So, yeah, I've fixed another iPod and gotten back to the same position that we were at. Up to the same step that we were at, sorry. And I've tested it now, and everything's working fine, so final steps, we can just put it all back together. Yeah, and I like to, um, that little tab at the bottom of the, um... LCD frame thingy, that metal piece. I like to cut that off because just the way the um, LCD flex sort of wraps around the bottom in there, what can end up happening is that tab can push up against the um, where it attaches to the logic board and you can end up just completely destroying the um, LCD connector. And again, if that happens, you've just ruined the entire iPod. There's no fixing that and you have to just chuck it out, get a new one, start again. So yeah, I like to cut it off and shave it down like what we what I'm doing in the video here. Mm -hmm. And then just apply some new adhesive on the back there just to stick down that LCD. Pretty straightforward. And then just insert that back in. Mm -hmm. Put that LCD connector back in. And also I like to put a, a layer of captain tape over all of the um, the connector and all those capacitors and stuff there just to protect it and it I'm pretty sure it has one to begin with anyway so oh yeah before we put the glass back on we want to just wipe off any fingerprints and stuff on both the LCD and the front glass because you know if we don't do that there's gonna be fingerprints under there and you have to just open it back up so may as well take this opportunity now while it's open and clean that up so it looks proper yeah, I just use toilet paper for this because toilet paper doesn't leave as many fibers as like tissues. But you could also use a microfiber cloth as well. And yeah, just place it back in as I'm doing in the video and push up at the top. It's more like a slide motion, I guess. Again, make sure the connector doesn't come out while you're doing that because it can pretty often. Now, aligning the um, lock switch, if it's still intact, hopefully. You have to be really careful with that. It's really easy to snap that along the way. And now pushing the whole thing back in. Just go... When you're pushing it back in, go slowly and gently and carefully. And if it, if it stops at any point, don't just force it. Because, you know, you can, you can damage stuff. And make sure... Yeah, just adjust that lock switch if it goes in at an angle or anything. Mm-hmm. 
We're pretty much, we've done all the hard parts now, pretty much. Just gotta screw it in, there's not much more you can stuff up here. And remembering the 45 degree angle on those screws. Also, you want to be sort of pushing down on that um, top bracket piece, because if you don't, it can sort of bow up in the middle. And then when you go to put that top plastic on, you can have issues where the lock switch doesn't really engage. And then you can have the iPod that just doesn't lock. So, yeah, just use your finger and push it down slightly in the middle there. Oh, no. We've still got to put the uh, bottom piece back on as well. So you just want to make sure that the... Um, flex cable for the buttons isn't in the way or anything because if you put a screw through it it's not going to be good and yeah with the bottom bottom three screws i think the um i think there's one longer one and i'm pretty sure that's for the middle Now all we have to do is put on that top and bottom plastic, which I mean, it may sound easy, and it is pretty easy, but still you got to take a bit of care with it because um, if the adhesive hangs over the side there, it can quite often get into the headphone jack or the 30 pin and gunk it all up. So yeah, just before we get started, you want to clean off any of the old adhesive, just with some ice propyl alcohol, or maybe scrape it back with the tweezers as well on both sides, not just on the plastic, but on the iPod itself. And then, yeah, just copy what I do. We get the iBoxy out. And just clean out all of that adhesive in there. Yeah, I don't really need to commentate this, but I guess, but just copy what I'm doing. You want to, yeah, you want to pull back the adhesive and make sure there's like the tiniest little gap around the 30 pin and the headphone connector. Because if you don't do that, yeah, as I said, it will gunk up the ports and you'll just have to redo it anyways. And the same process for the top one. Making sure you clean off all the adhesive where the um, little lock switch goes. Again, you might be tempted to just put adhesive around the sides and not do the full coverage sort of way that I do it, but you need adhesive on every every millimeter of the plastic that you can because there's not that much plastic that attaches and if you don't it'll just end up falling off anyway so just do it how I do it just copy how I do it I guess and yeah Yeah, as you can see, there are a lot of little tactics that are required in order to fix this iPod properly. There's so much you can stuff up because of how fragile and unrepairable this thing is. Not that Apple's obliged to make repairable products, but, you know, if you want products that are repairable, don't buy it. <laughs> don't accept this.
yeah, put the lock switch back on with the plastic and make sure you line it up with uh, the position it's in on the actual iPod itself and just place that in. And you want to push down sort of firmly as well after you got it in there just to make sure it all works. Yeah, and then just make sure it works by flicking the switch a few times. And make sure it's properly engaging there as well. If it's not, just push down in the middle. Yeah, I don't know. I find the lock function, it's hard to get it how it came out of the factory as well. Just, they use a different type of adhesive and it's just hard to replicate. It's just, yeah, this device wasn't really, as I said before, it's just not very fixable. It wasn't designed to be taken apart and put back together, really. So it's really, just get it as best as you can. And don't use super glue. I know it's tempting with these, but super glue and phone repair or iPod repair just never works out. You're just gonna stuff it up to the point where you can't fix it again in the future. And yeah, finally, you just wanna give the thing a wipe down with the isopropyl alcohol and take, clean off any adhesive or whatever you've got on there. And yeah, yeah, so that's pretty much what you'll be fixing with this iPod. If it's anything more than just a battery or an LCD, I don't know, good luck. <laughs> but it's if it's anything more than that, it's most likely to be a board issue. And at that point, you, you're better off just getting a new iPod or a new board because these are very unfixable, these boards. And a new one's not gonna cost you that much anyways, maybe five, 10, 20 bucks at the most. So you're always better off just doing that, just getting another one that is fixable than trying to salvage something with board issues or dead buttons or a corroded backlight or whatever but yeah if you do have a corroded backlight pin what you can do is run a wire from the um you just scrape back some of the uh pad like on the uh, flex cable and you can solder on a wire and then solder that onto the um actual lcd connector i'll show i'll show a picture or a video that can work i've had it maybe work maybe five times but i've attempted it maybe 10 times and those other times it hasn't worked so you know it's hit and miss it's something you can try if it's like a last resort or if you just if you're just interested in this stuff i guess um yeah but anything other than that that, oh, that can also work with the buttons as well sometimes the top pad on the buttons can be corroded and that that works more often to be honest yeah i have pretty good success doing that but um yeah it's just it's not really worth putting the time and the effort into doing anything more complex than that um an lcd replacement or a uh, battery with this ipod or a lock switch, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. I'm going to set up a library page soon, hopefully. Library is like a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer YouTube alternative. Um, you can check out my website. The checkout's not really working at the moment. So I wouldn't recommend buying anything from there, to be honest. I know that's a terrible endorsement. Hopefully I'll get it working in the future, but you can have a browse if you want. Um, and yeah, you can check out my eBay store as well. That's where I sell all this stuff. If you want to just buy one of my iPods instead of fixing your own. Or you could also message me for a um, quote for a repair. I do repairs now as well. So yeah, Australia only though this is. That's pretty much it for this. So yeah, see you next time, hopefully.